along, miss. We're just about ready, boy. What will they do to me? Do to? Why, nothing, my dear. You just tell them the truth, that's all. You just tell them the truth, that's all. Them being a coroner's jury assembled in this fine old house. But will they possibly believe the truth? This rarity of psychic phenomena doesn't even have a name. For mind over matter does not even begin to explain what happened in this house. Can the human mind create that which is not? But let's begin at the beginning. On the day Pamela first met Miss Cartwright, I hadn't realized she was so quick. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. I was that shocked when I saw your car in the front. Wasn't it Wednesday, you said, Mr. Hill? Tuesday, Mrs. Murphy. Tuesday at two. Oh, Tuesday, Pam. Tuesday. Isn't that shameful? We went to the circus. We had such a marvelous time. And you've been sitting here waiting. Oh, I'm sorry. But you mustn't be sorry, Mrs. Murphy. We had such a wonderful time. Best of all, I like the tiger. He was such a fierce tiger, with great yellow eyes. And his name was Ramu. Everybody was afraid of Ramu, except the clown. He was Ramu's friend. But if anybody else came close, if they looked as if they might hurt the clown, what a fierce roar the tiger would make. And he'd show his great, huge teeth. He protected the clown like... So you are Miss Pamela? Pamela? Mrs. Murphy, this is Miss Cartwright. Your father's engaged Miss Cartwright to look after you. She's not as young as Miss Gray was, is she? No, Pam, that's not nice. Oh, she isn't. I mean, it's not her fault. Pam. Oh, it doesn't matter. Children have no inhibitions. Well, I won't run off and leave you. Like Miss Gray, will I leave you all alone? But I'm not alone. I have Mrs. Murphy. She loves me. She bought me this tiger with her own money. She knows magic and how to cast spells and how to bring people to life that are dead. Like her dog, Charlie, who ran away five years ago. Silly. He may not be dead at all. Shh, Pam, that's silly talk. Oh, how very remarkable. It's true, she told me. Hush, Pam, you mustn't tell them all our secrets. Miss Cartwright will, of course, be in complete charge, just as Miss Graves was. Of course. Keeping the account books, paying your salary and the gardeners, etc., etc but mostly tutoring the child. Did he say when he'd be coming back at all? For a bit of a visit, I mean. No, but it shouldn't be too long now. He mentions you in every letter. He's most interested in your welfare. That's why we engaged Miss Cartwright. When he does come to visit us, he will be so delighted in Miss Pamela's progress in French and etiquette and all sorts of things. I trust so. We don't want to disappoint your father, do we, Miss Pamela? You must be so proud of such an important man. Think of all the little girls who only have dull, ordinary daddies. Oh, it's, it's because she's missing her father. He really ought to come and see her more often. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go to her. Well, I hope, Miss Cartwright, that everything will turn out satisfactorily. She's a difficult child, but... Uh, well, don't you I worry about the thing, Mr. Hildreth. Sorry, I acted like this. I know you are. But it was a vulgar thing to say. Everybody wants to be young. Oh, well, what did she think about me? A daft old woman. Knows magic and cast. I think it's a scarecrow. That she scares me. Oh, Pam. She does. She's got scary eyes. She was very pleasant to you. Her eyes were. Besides, you did say you could do magic. Oh, I never said any such thing. How many times did you tell me that you could bring back Mr. Murphy, your husband, and your dog Charlie, just by wanting to? That's different. That's for me. That's in my own mind. You said. You could see 
Mr. Murphy smoking his pipe, and Charlie scratching his leaf. As clear as you see anything. That's not magic. That's just, well, believing. You wish, and you wish, and you wish. You say, John, you're here in your special chair. And you're looking at me. And you're smiling. And if you wish hard enough, he's there. He is. Well, it doesn't work for me. So if it works for you, it must be magic. I don't care if he is important. I don't care at all. Oh, honey, he can't help being away. It's his work. Will you come with me, Mrs. Murphy? Well, I've helped Pam change her dress. And now. Don't you worry, darling. Just you keep wishing. Room's not heated properly. It hasn't been used for four years. Not since Madam died. Is it my help you want with the clothes, Miss Cartwright? Don't touch my clothes. I don't allow anyone to touch my clothes. I have them made specially for me. At great expense. The designer made clothes for many members of the nobility. See why I shouldn't use this room? It's not all that grand. When I was a child, we had a house far lovelier than this. My mother's bedroom would have put this one to shame. It had a crystal chandelier. Important from abroad. Do you think I've always been in the service of others? Well, now, Mrs. Murphy, I understand that you have been paid £4.10 a week. That's right, ma'am. The extra ten shillings is for your taxi into town. But I'm not paid till Saturday, ma'am. Oh, now, come, Mrs. Murphy, after what I've seen this evening, the way you handle the child. And that ridiculous exhibition in front of the solicitor. Well, you can't be surprised that I'm dismissing you. You're obviously a bad influence on the child, as well as a person who does not know how to keep her place. I'm terribly sorry about what I said. Oh, I know I shouldn't have spoken the way I did, but I was that concerned about Pam. I'm sure Miss Pamela and I will manage very well. They're more like mother and daughter. I've been with her since she was three. I've had that feeling once or twice myself. It's a nice feeling, isn't it? Please. I think you'd better order your taxi, Mrs. Murphy. Oh, please, Miss Cartwright. Your taxi, Mrs. Murphy. Pamela didn't mean what she said. Oh, she's terribly overexcited. No, Mrs. Murphy. Don't you do it. Pamela, darling, you mustn't speak like that. Now, there's my good little girl. She's my friend. She loves me. She's not going away. Would you connect me with the taxi company, please? Don't you dare. Oh, would you send a taxi to the Weldon's house, please? Straight away. Mrs. Murphy, don't let her. Don't let her. Hadn't you better get on with your packing, Mrs. Murphy?
not a nice little girl at all, are you, Miss Pamela? Well, never mind. I've dealt with nasty little girls before. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to see if we can find a little room in this big house. And we're going to call it the punishment room. And when you're nasty, you can go to that little room and you can stay there until you're a good girl again. I always have a punishment room for my nasty little girls. I find it works wonders. I never have to hit them or scold them or anything like that. Now, shall we come and see what we can find in this big house? told me how to do it. How do you do it? How do you make Mrs. Murphy and your dog Charlie real? You're here. I can see you in the dark. You're here. I can see your eyes in the dark. You're here. You're here. Well, I'm positive as a bat that they weren't here yesterday, Mum. I know that. I, I saw them when I come in just now, and I was that shocked. Well, it, it looks as though someone's been scraping their feet. But you, you wouldn't get scratches like that from someone scraping their feet, would you? But what else could it be? Pamela. What do you know about this? Looks like an animal did that. A great scratching animal. <laughs> You'll run along, get on with your scratch. I bet a tiger would make marks like that. <laughs> that one's got a lovely imagination, hasn't she? It, you don't have cats around, do you? What? I'm very sensitive to cats. Allergic is what they call it. I do feel a bit off my best. <laughs> I suppose it's just the weather. I'm sure. Now, we'll start from the beginning again. The day is cold. The day is cold. Les soirs are... How many times have I to tell you that soir is night? I'm sorry. You're not sorry at all. I forget. You forget on purpose. And leave that doll upstairs and concentrate on your lesson. You better stop being so mean to me. It might have been a tiger. Le soir, un, Who found it like this? Me. When I came to work this morning, oh, I thought my heart would stop. And you heard no commotion during the night? No, not a thing. I did. But you'll be cross if I say. Say what? What are you talking about? Why should I be cross? What did you hear? Can I tell him? Oh, she'll say anything. The child's a pathological liar. Ask the cleaning woman. What did you hear? Can I? You can tell him anything that comes into your little mind. It was a growl of an animal. It was a huge animal. Like a giant cat or a tiger. A tiger? You must be warning, Constable. Wild and fierce and dangerous. Like it was hungry and mad. I see. Well, uh, thank you very much. It's true. 
something here by the door. True, I heard it. Oh, Ethel, stop staring up the next, will you? She's got quite an active imagination, hasn't she? Too active, I'm afraid. Next time I write to her father, I shall have to tell him one or two things. There is a catch in the L. I don't say it's a tiger, and I don't say it's huge and fierce. But I'm sensitive to cats, and I know when there's a cat around, all right. And there's one round here someplace. Oh, no, 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 no. Why are you so awkward? Do it again. No, 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 that's worse. And again. Again? I've been doing it a thousand times. My legs hurt. Well, you'll go on doing it until you get it right. I suppose you think you're too grand to curtsy to someone like me. But you're not, you know. You're quite common. Oh. No, 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 no. That's worse. When I was a little girl, I used to curtsy so beautifully. Come here. Come here. There is a tiger in the house. Tell me there isn't something moving around the house. Look at this chair. Look at these long yellow ears. Where do you suppose they come from? Some sweet little kitten. Not likely. Look at these. Look at these. And the scratches on the wall. And the provision shed all torn to pieces. Oh, I've been feeling the first day I come through that front door. Don't you tell me. The child is right, but there's a monster of some kind in this house. I'm packing in right now. Catching the first bus to home in safety. Blitzing wild beasts roaming about loose. If you had any sense of responsibility, you'd take that poor child away from here before something terrible happens. You can send what's due to me to the agency. There isn't any doubt about it, surely. Well, it won't hurt you or me if you stop being so mean to me. Tell me some more about the tiger. What's it look like? Well, it's big, like room at the circus. And judging by the hairs, quite yellow. Yes, like marmalade, with the fiercest yellow eyes. But it can be quite gentle, too. Well, how did it come to be here? Did it escape from the circus? No, I wished it. How clever of you. You wished it. Where is it? Well, he sleeps during the day. I don't know where he hides. I mean, your doll. Which doll? The one with the long yellow hair. I don't know. You're lying again, Miss Pamela. I'm not. I'm not. Where is that doll? I don't know. Didn't care for it anyhow. Tell me where the doll is. I don't know. I don't know. Where is the doll? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. its long yellow hair, Miss Pamela. I almost did it. I almost made a tiger. <laughs> You're quite insane. Did you know that? Little girls can go insane, you know. Not just adults. Well, it's too late to telephone him now, but first thing tomorrow morning, we are going to telephone that solicitor, and you are going to tell him everything you've done. Do you understand that? Every last little thing. And let him tell that to your father. I'm sorry about everything, Miss Cartwright. Really, I am. Please don't punish me this time. I think I might go to the cinema this evening. I might even dine in town. That means you will be all alone in this house. No. No, I'm not. No. Not quite alone. 
You'll have your tiger, won't you? How long will you be gone? Do it. Mrs. Murphy said all you have to do is wish. I've wished, and I've wished, and I've wished. Oh, how I've wished. I wish. I wish that you were here. In cases of unexplained death, an autopsy is usually automatic. Miss Cartwright's autopsy revealed no evidence whatsoever of any physical abnormality. Consequently, the inquest decided that she had died of heart failure. Pamela's story, of course, was not believed for a second. The fantasy of a child, they decided. Then what did so shock Miss Cartwright that caused her perfectly healthy heart to suddenly stop beating. Well, the students of parapsychology will point out that there are numerous reports of this type of psychic phenomenon. But to be more specific, one happened in London in 1871 and was investigated by Charles Dickens. A woman named Catherine King willed a charlady named Mary Guffey to appear in nightdress and bedroom slippers in front of a dozen startled women not the least of which was Mrs. Guffey herself, who a few seconds before had been sleeping peacefully before her fire, many, many miles away. Impossible? Certainly. But 12 sensible people swore out affidavits that it had happened, 13 including Mrs. Guffey. Impossible. Now, in the vastness of this universe, which we have barely begun to probe, who's to say that anything is impossible? I mean, who's to really know? 